The book of Hosea, chapter 4, with the word of wisdom from our Father, in Jesus' name, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, that's loving kindness, nor knowledge of God in the land. And you know why this is? Because people will not study their Father's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, and the so-called Christian preachers will not teach it. They won't teach chapter by chapter and verse by verse. They teach traditions of men and not the truth. So what do you expect? And this is the negative of Deuteronomy 28 coming to pass as well. Historically, this was going on, and as I've said numerous times, Galatians chapter 3 documents that Abraham's seed, that is to say Israel, God's family, is Christianity. That's how you are redeemed unto God, whether you be of the natural seed line or otherwise, whosoever will. Race is not an issue when it comes to salvation, and this is the book of Hosea, which means salvation, the book of salvation. So even if you were descended directly from the 12 tribes, if you're not in Christ, well, then you're going to hell if you don't get your act together. So what difference does it make? It matters whether or not you are or you aren't in Christ Jesus. And it matters if you understand the word of God or not, or else you're going to be deceived. If you want to maintain your eternal salvation, then you're going to have to get into God's word and study it with understanding chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Otherwise, you'll be deceived and you'll no longer be a Christian, but a Satan worshiper whenever you begin to worship Satan when he appears as the false Christ. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. One spiritual death after another because of this. And you can see this looking forward into the future as since. Historically, he's talking about the two golden calves that Jeroboam set up. And you can read of that in 1 Kings chapter 12, where it says in verse 27, Jeroboam says this to himself. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, like they were supposed to, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. This is just after the tribes had split into a northern and southern kingdom. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. He was better off letting them kill him, if that's what was going to happen, than what he did. Whereupon the king took counsel with who? Who did he take counsel with? Well, I'll let you guess. And made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel. This is swearing falsely by the name of God. They're claiming that these golden calves brought them out of the land of Egypt. And you didn't think God was going to get angry about it? This is why he's so angry. This is what happened. And in the future sense, if you thought that made him angry, wait till people start whoring after Satan, saying that he's Christ. Wait till you see how he reacts to that at the seventh trumpet. And the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin for the people to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made an house of high places. And listen to this. This is who he took counsel with. And made priests of the lowest of the people. Look up that word lowest in your concordance. It's closely akin to the word Cain. It's right in that same location in your Hebrew dictionary which were not of the sons of Levi, sons of Cain, the Kenites, obviously. Who else would it have been? And so that's who you see spoken of in the book of Amos and throughout the minor prophets and here even. But whose fault is it? Is it the fault of the Kenites for deceiving the people in Jeroboam? They're at fault, yes, but the people should have known better than that than to worship golden calves. Surely they couldn't have thought that that was okay. And what does it boil down to? Ignorance of God's word. They didn't know that it wasn't okay because they were ignorant. And the same thing's going to happen again when Satan appears in Jerusalem as the false Christ with two horns like a lamb. That's what those golden calves are types of. His two horns, symbolic of power, his cheap fabric imitation of Christ's theocracy. He'll be trying to pass himself off as the king of kings and lord of lords, and the whole world will whore after him because they don't know God's word. 
They don't know that there is a warning throughout this word that that shall come to pass. In one way or another, in every book of the Bible, it points toward that event. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish. This is global in the end times. With the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. At the seventh trumpet, all flesh will be done away with before it's all over with as well. And that's when it's reckoning time. You really want to have your act together before then. And better yet, seek the Lord early. Seek him now. Get into his word now, whereby you're not deceived by Satan. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. And who were these priests? They weren't from Levi. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children." What does this mean, destroy thy mother? The nation of Israel at that time ceased to be. The northern kingdom, the capital of which was Samaria, ceased to exist, and they went into captivity. Those ten tribes, taken captive by the Assyrian, a type of Antichrist. So see the type within this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 lets you know that these things happen as an example to you living in the generation of the fig tree, to paraphrase the verse. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They're going to be so ashamed of themselves at the return of the true Christ, whenever they finally realize what's going on, they're going to pray for the mountains to fall on them. They're so ashamed to face Christ. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. Because you're not going to be able to say, well, the preacher told me to do it. Hey, it's not going to be a matter of who told you to do it. It's why did you do it is what God's going to ask you most likely. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but of course he's going to hold you personally responsible, isn't he? Yeah. Have you read his word? Of course he is. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom. They'll become that whore of Babylon and shall not increase, because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine, that wine of fornication that the whore of Babylon gets drunk on in Revelation chapter 17, and new wine take away the heart. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. They'll quit taking communion to the true Christ and start taking communion to Satan. Think how disgusting that is, and think how angry that would make you if you were God. Now do you understand? My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a-whoring from under their God. Historically, now, and in the future sense, they'll become the whore of confusion, the whore of Babylon that sits upon many waters, worshiping the false Christ, saying, I am no widow, I sit as a queen. But she's going to be made naked and desolate at the seventh trumpet. It's not going to be a pretty sight. Again, the shame at that time will be galactically historic. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. This is grove worship. You see the commemoration of Ishtar every year in the so-called Christian churches. They're really Beth of Inns. They're not houses of God if they're doing that. They didn't understand their father's word enough to know that he detests people worshiping other gods. You're talking about a pagan fertility goddess, Ishtar, and the rolling of the Easter eggs. That's a symbol of fertility, and you're having little children do that at the time of the year when you're supposed to be commemorating the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? And on top of that, they have sunrise services where we go and celebrate the time when Jesus rose from the grave. He didn't rise from the grave Sunday morning. 
Have you read the book? Have you not read, as Christ himself would say constantly? That's sun worship. Check out Ezekiel chapter 8 if you don't believe me. See for yourself. That's what that is. It goes hand in hand with the Ishtar grove rituals that took place then, and now they commemorate that. And do you think God's happy about that at all? You're supposed to celebrate the Passover. Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us, the high Sabbath of Christianity. Not some pagan fertility ritual and whoring after other gods. That's what it is. It's idolatry. Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. How's that sound? I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery, for themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that doth not understand shall fall in the great apostasy. They're going to be deceived, and they deserve it, because they had better things to do than study their father's word. They had the Bible there the whole time. What's the excuse for not going through it chapter by chapter and verse by verse with understanding? Where's your excuse? Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, Yet let not Judah offend. This is a historical warning to Judah, but they fell as well and went into captivity also. About 200 years later, taken into captivity by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, another type of antichrist, the king of Babylon of the end times, being Satan when he appears as the false Christ, and the whore of Babylon being those who are deceived into his religious system. Christianity is not a religion, but a reality. Those who like to play church will go right along with it. They'll think it's the best thing that's ever happened. But at the seventh trumpet, woe unto them. And this is a warning to Judah. Come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Bethaven, the house of emptiness, nor swear the Lord liveth. Don't go worship them golden calves, Judah, is the warning here. And it's a warning today even. Don't whore after the false Christ. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. He can't leave the idols alone, is what this reads in the Hebrew. He's obsessed and addicted to idols. He's obsessed with them and he's addicted to them. And their drink is sour. Their drink is rebellion. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers with shame do love. Give ye. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Pass around the collection plate. Do you see this in the modern day churches? The wind hath bound her up in her wings. The wings being the skirt. The hot air puffed out by the fake preachers has twisted her up to where she can't even move. Put into bondage by the traditions of men. And they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices, and so they will at the seventh trumpet. You can read of it in Revelation chapter 6. They pray for the mountains to fall on them, to hide them from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne. They're ashamed to face the true Christ. And I don't blame them. Wouldn't you be too once you realize this? Those of you that can see what God's saying here, can't you see why they would be ashamed and want to die at that time? But they won't be able to. They'll be in spiritual bodies. But Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer, falls right back into the apostasy, doesn't even know who she is. Israel doesn't. The ten tribes have no idea that they're Israel. They don't know that. And as we read in verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, destroyed spiritually spiritually killed at the sixth trumpet because of their ignorance. And there you have it, the book of Hosea, chapter 4.